Hello friends, in this lab exercise or video tutorial, we are going to learn how to set up Ansible on our Linux host. Uh, this host doesn't have any Ansible as of now. So if I hit enter, it just says command not found. Okay, so before we install Ansible, we need to ensure that uh, corresponding repository is available or we can download the rpm package also or whatever package you need for your linux version or distribution uh, this is the path of my current directory where repositories are configured i have these repositories which are already enabled i can quickly show you how to enable any uh, repository you can use this ls ls command to see the contents of any text file so you see here enabled is set to zero so uh, zero means it is disabled one means enabled so i have intentionally set it to zero because uh, i have not attached the iso image to my virtual machine when I attach it, I usually mount it under this directory path and then I enable it when I need to use it and it doesn't have the Ansible package and dependencies required. So anyways, it is not required for my purpose. Now let's check the uh, some of the other ones. So this one. You see enables one. So I have enabled rest of the repositories. Okay, how to enable repositories or disable them? You can view, uh, watch my video on that under the uh, how to section or playlist. Now, uh, I believe that you know how to enable them, but I'll quickly just uh, share one thing that you can do this yum dash config manager and dash dash enable star. So star has a special meaning, so you can just use the escape character sequence backslash so this will enable all the repositories so if I hit here like this you can see the text <laughs> flashing on the screen now if I look at this also it has also been been enabled now okay so uh, I need to just uh, disable this thing so I can manually disable it or run the disable command with the yum config manager and provide it to the uh, this ID repo ID so I'm disabling it now next thing is yum repo list so it will show all the repositories uh, set up okay it did not take much time because I have already done that now I did it because uh, otherwise it would take much time so when you run yum repo list it will take some time and no worries about it now the next thing is yum install ansible so it will check which repositories provide the required package and dependency so which of them which we already have configured okay so and dependencies mean uh, means uh, packages for example you are installing package a but you need package b also for the package one or package a to work so your package may require many other packages so you can say you can see that uh, it is listing uh, one package which we want that is the ansible plus 19 dependent packages will be installed so y d n y means yes install them d means only download them don't install them and n means no so if i scroll up a bit you can see all these packages because their versions from what repositories they are coming okay so as you can see some are coming from the bass some are coming from the extras now I can say why here it 
it's going to take some time but not much anyways this is uh, uh, you know the very first video I am creating uh, for the playlist Ansible for absolute beginners so I had to do it from scratch okay from the very beginning because you might wonder if, uh, if I just create some videos uh, how to run Ansible command do uh, you know how to do this and that but if you don't know how to set up Ansible in the first place then it's going to be a problem or trouble something and then you search on the Google so I don't want you to run from one place to another so everything you will find under this playlist of course it's going to take time it's going to be a an, be an interesting journey now let's see Ansible hyphen hyphen version So we got this Ansible package 2420. So Ansible 2x, uh, that is the version we have got, and it says it's a system configuration that is the Ansible configuration is uh, located here, and uh, other things are also mentioned. And this is the command which we are going to run. So when we say which Ansible, we see the path here. So it is located at this location. Now, since it is clear that uh, the configuration file is here, so we can just enter this directory and see there are certain files and subdirectories here. Okay, let's see roles. There is nothing as of now. So this is a sample uh, configuration. Now hosts. So hosts is your inventory file. It it uh, has the uh, list of all the hosts you want to configure or manage. Okay. So hashes means uh, comments. So you can use just one single hash here. Okay. Uh, so this means it's a comment. So the, these comments are there to help you build your um, hosts file or inventory file. Now you can give some other name also probably but the thing is this is a sample file here. Now let's have a quick look at this also and we'll go through several things one by one. So you can configure how Ansible is going to act or react etc so make a note of this directory now I go to my home directory which is this and I want to create an Ansible project okay so we have installed the Ansible now we want to create an Ansible project so that we can begin uh, with the rest of the exercises so just use this command Ansible dash galaxy so I use it so that I can get a template of uh, like what all things I may want okay so Ansible dash galaxy in it this is an optional step but uh, I like to do it so in it and then give it a name okay so let's say um, my dash project So it has been successfully created. Now let's go into it. Okay. So we didn't create the directory. It's already uh, done by the Ansible Galaxy command. Okay. So you see there is a template here. There is a structure here. This readme file is there. Markdown language we can use so uh, let's look at it okay generally you use this M md file when you are pushing your configurations or scripts to github or some other repositories uh, for uh, the version control of your uh, files 
okay now so there is this directory defaults files handlers meta tasks template tests where all of them are important things okay but to begin with they are optionals also for us okay what each folder is created for we will explore in later videos it is just an example here guys that uh, this is how we create a hierarchy or a template so this my project is template as of now I'm using the word template very roughly here there is this directory templates you can go into it and see if there is anything usually these directories have nothing they are just there to tell you that you can organize your scripts your playbooks in a way that it is very easy to recognize later on or use within your playbooks or scripts okay so you can have your file sample files in this directory you can have your templates in this directory and uh, you can have your variables defined somewhere else like that and what defaults you want every time okay usually there would be a file with the name main main.yml why yml because yml is the uh, is the format of the uh, playbook or a script that we use and we can also make use of python to build modules okay so modules are just uh, uh, libraries or extra functionalities okay so there are inbuilt uh, uh, modules or libraries available and uh, you can write your own you can use python so let's go into this directory and we can see there is only one file there usually this file you will create or update main.yml so it is just a simple file as you can see it says defaults file for my project now I just do this CD my dash project so I can create my inventory file here also with the name hosts or the default one I can use slash etc and Sible hosts that also we can use so let's do this we make a copy of this file okay original now let's modify it so here you see examples are given so you can mention your host name or IPs and you can also group them for example example is already given so web servers so web servers these are my web servers so you give the name in brackets as shown here you can also say say DP servers you can specify the instance name or the complete you know FQTN or URL for IP etc so and you if you have let's say 1000 servers and uh, naming convention you have used which is very uh, you know uh, uh, which has uniformity then you can just specify rents that uh, db dash starting from 99 to 100 101 like that so you don't have to type them uh, type each one of them I, I'm going to first delete all these stuffs let's make a comment here my hosts inventory to dot, dot, dot now let's uh, keep a simple group here uh, let's say magic okay but you would uh, certainly do something meaningful here like uh, database servers web servers your uh, xyz servers application servers backup servers and let's provide an IP here so 
let's see okay let's first ping it manually yeah connectivity is there it should be able to ping now the thing is we have our inventory file here this is the default file and only one host is mentioned now a very basic command we are going to run here uh, please note that uh, Ansible requires us to set up SSH keys also and we should share those SSH keys with the user on the remote host okay having similar user account setup so what happens in projects or organizations they can use the root account also and uh, to perform activities or they can create one uh, um, application account with the name Ansible or something similar and then provided the privileges this account would need to do the work or this account can then uh, you know check the identity of the root user also so there are many ways uh, let's keep things uh, some simple here so Ansible so uh, now let's say our host file is already the default file so I don't have to say happen I and then the uh, path to the host file here but yes I can say that there is a group of this magic uh, group let's let's do this uh, list hosts okay so under this group we have only one host there now what I want to do is just uh, on this particular host run this command so I am using module and the module name is ping just ping it okay and ask pass so I'm providing the password okay so we sent a ping request we got a response pong so that means uh, from this control host this black magic we can connect to the other host white magic and uh, ansible is able to uh, uh, transfer files scripts and execute commands there or scripts there okay or playbooks whatever you call them so this is a successful scenario here of course this is a very basic thing which we have just tried okay if I don't use ask password then there is going to be a problem because we have not exchanged the SSH, SSH keys yet if I don't specify this ask pass or ask passwords what happens let's see it fails ask password we can also supply the password or we can create a secure password using the vault uh, that Ansible provides but you know that is for another video or lab exercise so this time I am giving it the password okay if I run the same command again without uh, this uh, ask password for some seconds it will work okay. but uh, if there is a gap more than few seconds then it will ask for the password or it will just fail so I think guys this is uh, quite good enough for this lab exercise uh, we will continue exploring lots of things in later videos so I'll try my best to uh, up, update this playlist this new series uh, very frequently thank you guys bye bye